Hey, and welcome back. Now we are beginning a new session, so we're gonna be back on page number 17 to fill out pillar number three, and then we'll go to page number 44. So let's go to page 17 and fill out pillar number three. Pillar number three is three steps, meet, love, serve, and then a bullet point under each of those three words could be Jesus and people. So meet Jesus, meet people. Love Jesus, love people. Serve Jesus, serve people. Let's break that down now. So go with me to page number 44 in your journals, and uh, it looks like this. We're gonna fill this out. So we're going to write on first base, meet Jesus. We're gonna write on second base, love Jesus. And then we're gonna write on third base, serve Jesus. Meet Jesus, love Jesus, serve Jesus. This is our spiritual growth process. This is our discipleship process. So let's walk through that together. In order for us to meet Jesus, we have to write it here. Be exposed to Jesus, right? We have to be exposed to Jesus. In order to meet Jesus for the first time, we need to be exposed to Jesus. So the question is, how are you or what are you doing to expose yourself to Jesus on a regular basis? In order to love Jesus, we need to get to know Jesus. This is where Bible literacy comes in. A lot of times we use Bible literacy as the main way to disciple. Bible literacy is just Bible literacy. It's not discipleship. It's just Bible literacy. But it's important, and it's important right here. This is all of discipleship. Bible literacy fits in this part of the discipleship process, okay? We are exposed to Jesus, so therefore we meet Him. Once we meet Jesus, we need to get to know Him more through Scripture, through Bible study, through prayer, all that other stuff. And the more we get to know Jesus, the more we begin to love Jesus. The more we love Jesus, the more we will learn to trust Jesus. The more we learn to trust Jesus, the more we will naturally want to serve Him. And the more we serve Jesus, the more we act like Jesus to people. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 says, Even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. You want to act like Jesus? Serve people. So, be exposed to Jesus in order to meet Jesus. Help people be exposed to Jesus to meet Jesus. Get to know Jesus to love Jesus more. The more you get to know Him, the more you love Him. The more you love Him, the more you trust Him. The more you trust Him, the more you'll naturally want to serve Him. The more you serve Him, the more you begin to act like Jesus to people. And you do all of that through your interest. We're going to talk more about that in a future video. But for now, this is the process of meeting, loving, and serving Jesus.
Okay, welcome back. Now, if you will, turn with me to page number 46. We just got finished talking about, we went through the baseball diamonds, uh, and we just got finished talking about meeting Jesus, loving Jesus, and serving Jesus. Now we're going to go back on page 46, and we've got another blank diamond. But in this part, we're going to write meet people, love people, and serve people. And so that is now what we're going to talk about. We've talked about meeting, loving, and serving Jesus. Now we're going to talk about meeting, loving, and serving people. Well, in order to meet people, what do we have to do? We have to be exposed to people, right? So what are you doing to put yourself in a position to be around people? I think sometimes we don't share the gospel with people simply because there are no people for us to share the gospel with because we have chosen to isolate ourselves. Listen, as a Christian, you are not called to isolate yourself from the rest of the world. You are called to be in the world, but not of the world. That's what we are called to be. So in order for us to minister to people, we have to meet people. In order to meet people, we need to be exposed to people, okay? Now, you may be watching this and you may be like me. You're an introvert. You say, Preston, it's hard for me to meet people. It's hard for me to talk to people. Well, pray about that, number one. But you, you have friends or you have trusted family members that you can go and ask them for help and ask them for wisdom. Hey, how are you able to have conversations with strangers and all of those things, right? But either way, we need to be exposed to people in order to meet them. Now, after we've met people, we need to get to know them. We can't love somebody we don't know. But the more we get to know people, the more we will begin to naturally love them. So once we meet them, get to know them, as we get to know them, we will begin to love them. As we love them, we'll begin to develop an empathy for them. Empathy is nothing more than me being able to put myself in your shoes and, and to live life your way for a moment through your eyes and say, wow, uh, if I were going through that situation, whatever that situation may be, I would feel like this. That's what empathy means. So as we meet people, we get to know them. The more we get to know the people, the more we will begin to love them. The more we love the people, the more we will develop an empathy towards them which will then make us naturally want to, motivated to, serve people. And as we serve people, then we earn the right to be heard. I think sometimes we try to share the gospel with people without earning the right to be heard. People don't care what you know until they know that you care, right? And so let's meet people. Let's get to know them by falling in love with them. And as we love them more, we'll develop an empathy towards them. As we develop that empathy towards them, we'll want to serve them. We'll have a desire to serve them. And as we serve people, we will begin to earn the right to be heard so that we can share the gospel. And once again, we do all of that. Look at the picture's mouth. We do all of that through our interests. So in just a moment, we're going to learn more about how we can discover and leverage our interests for the glory of God. But for now, this is how we round the basis. We meet Jesus, we love Jesus, we serve Jesus. And then we meet people, we love people, and we serve people. That's what we are called to do as the Ecclesia, as those who have been called to represent Jesus.
Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at pages 48 and 49. Now, um, there's an old movie, I think it's Chariots of Fire. Uh, it's about a, a man named Eric Little. Great story, I encourage you to go and watch that. But uh, one part in that uh, movie, he says this, I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Now, several years ago, I had a similar experience as Eric um, when I was in my room and I was playing my guitar. That's an interest that I have, right? And I was playing my guitar. And uh, when I was done playing my guitar, I sat my guitar down and I felt as though God was smiling down on me. It was weird because I wasn't even thinking about him. I was simply being 100% selfish in the moment and just enjoying the guitar. But I felt him smile down on me, so I verbally said, well, that's weird. And then God whispered to me, he said, Preston, why is that weird? You're a dad. Don't you enjoy watching your kids enjoy the gifts that you've given them, even if they're not acknowledging you while they enjoy those gifts? Well, it was just after Christmas time, and I just got finished doing that with my kids. So I said, yes. And then God said, well, Preston, aren't I a better dad than you? Yes. And then it's almost as if I could see him shrugging his shoulders like, so why is it a surprise that you would be smiled down on by your heavenly father. I'm a good dad, so of course I would smile down on you, right? And so once that happened, it changed the way that I looked at my guitar. I no longer looked at the guitar as something that was just for me. I looked at it um, as a tool that I could leverage for him. Go with me to page 49 and you'll understand. I'm gonna fill out this for you so you can kind of have an example, but page 49 begins with Howard Thurman who said this, don't ask what the world needs, Ask what makes you come alive and go and do it because what the world needs is people who have come alive. When I read that quote, I had to ask myself, what is it that really makes me come alive? And so for me, I wrote down, play guitar. That's what makes me come alive. Creating things, that makes me come alive. Reading, that makes me come alive. So if that's true, um, then what do I need to invest in order to do those things? Well, I need to invest money in good musical equipment. I need the best money that I can invest in it, right? Uh, I need to spend time. I need to invest time in creating. Creating takes time, so I need to create that time, okay? Uh, I need to give up one episode of TV to read, right? Or get up earlier to read. If reading makes me come alive, I need to invest time to do that. I also need to buy books right or a way to read uh, and then what's the last one I will invite God into my practice time once I realized that God smiles down on me when I play guitar I decided I'm going to start acknowledging his presence while I play guitar so I no longer practice at all I don't look at my guitar as practice at all it's all spending time with him I don't look at devotional life as boring or um, unengaging because sometimes my devotional experience is me playing the guitar or spending time with him or me talking with him as I read a book or me as I'm creating something, you see. So I've decided, and I think this is helpful for you, begin to look at your interests not as something to keep you away from God but as something to get you closer to him. God wants to speak to you through your interest and this is going to be super helpful as you discover what you are interested in. Begin to leverage your interests for him. If I have an interest that does not violate scripture, it's just a good interest like guitar or whatever it may be, then I can say maybe that is an interest that God has given me for my joy and for his glory. Our interests are love languages that God has given us and he wants to speak to us through those. So take some time between now and the next video to fill out page number 49 and really wrestle with this. Really think about what is it that makes you come alive and then go and do it.
Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've taken some time in page 49 to begin to discover some interests that you have. Now let's turn to page 50 and 51. This is still part of our interest. We're trying to discover the interests that God has given us, especially those interests that are not sinful. I mean, it's an interest that's just a generic interest. It could be good or it could be bad. It could be a distraction from God or it could be a tool to engage in our relationship with God. It's just an interest. So on page 50, my interest worksheet, it says this, if you had to prioritize your interest, which would you choose first? Assign that to the green section of the funnel. Second would be the yellow and the third would be the red. Identify all potential fruits of each interest, including how it affects your walk with Jesus. So for me, I would write down read, and then I would write down create, and then I would write down play guitar. Okay, this is just examples from what you just saw from the last video. A fruit of me reading is knowledge and encouragement. So yeah, when I read, I gain knowledge and I gain encouragement. Um, the fruit that comes from me creating whatever it is I'm creating is I gain a sense of purpose and accomplishment. Okay, great. I'm just identifying the fruits, the value of this. Play guitar, what I gain from that is rest and joy for my soul. And I get to create along the way, so it's a win-win. It's a Again, Howard Thurman would say, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go and do it, because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Now, on page 51, I'm not going to show you my examples here, but I do want to encourage you to do this. It says on page 51, Text four family members and four of your closest friends, and this is what you're supposed to text. I say, I am currently participating in a life mapping process, and I'm seeking input from others. I am curious what three words you would use to describe what I am most passionate about in general. Please reply with three words only. I'll explain more later. Thanks for your help. So just take that, text that to three or four family members and four friends, and then see what they come back with. Write that down in your journal because all of that is going to inform your why. We're gonna talk more about that in a, another video, but we're trying to discover our unique gifting. We're trying to discover our why. Why has God put me here on this earth? And one of the ways in which we can discover that is we discover what we are most interested in, what we are most passionate about. God speaks to us through his word, through prayer and through other people. On page 51, this is an encouragement to get other people involved in your life so that God can speak through them to you. So I encourage you, pull out your phone now, text this to four friends and four family members, and then see what happens. And when you're done, go ahead and come back to the next video.
Okay, welcome back. Now let's turn to page 52 and 53. Uh, on page 52, we are going to discover my why. And we're going to write down some of the things we've already covered. So on the top circle, write message and then put his story plus my story. We've already talked about how God's story plus my story equals my message, okay? Now also write down the word voices. We've kind of talked about that. We've kind of identified what our interests are. Our interests become a love language that God uses to speak to us and God uses to allow us to speak to Him and to other people. Other people who share the same interests that we do, that becomes our circle of influence that we begin to help walk around the bases with, right? So that's our message and our voices. And then over here we have platforms and we have the toilet paper principle. Don't worry, I will explain that in the next video. Uh, but for now, just write it down. And then you can write down in the gaps here, abilities, passions, and context. Now, hopefully you're going through this material with a life coach so that you can have deeper conversations uh, than what we can have in these videos. But this is a way that you will be able to discover your unique why, okay? Now on page 53, let's look at this so we can better come up with our two word why combination, okay? It says come up with a two word combination, come up with as many as you can come up with. Just start writing them down, just brainstorm. We're in the brainstorming stage right now. Use a verb ending in ing on the first word and a noun for your second word. An example would be inspiring truth or building community or experiencing freedom. And then it says place a check on top of the three that or four that best represent you. Consider them and then circle the one that makes your heart beat the fastest and gives you the most purpose and focus in your day. So for me, I wrote down many words. All of these words resonate with me, okay? All of these words would be good words, but not all of them are great. So after I've done my time, and I wanna encourage you between now and the next video, hey, don't rush this, right? Take some time and really think through two word combinations, maybe based on some of the, the words that were texted to you by your friends and family members. But write out as many as you can come up with, okay? And then scratch out the ones that you say, well, those are great, but they're not me, they're not resonating with me. And then start to really pray about this. Let the Lord speak into this exercise for you and say, God, what do you have for me? Give me some clarity. And then put a check beside the ones that you say, yeah, I'm starting to narrow it down. And then finally, whichever one makes your heart beat fastest and makes you have more purpose and focus in life, that's the one you circle and that becomes your why. These two words become your marching orders to, to apply to every situation. I can apply experiencing freedom to every situation in my life. And that becomes my why.
Hey guys, welcome back. So far, we've talked a lot about our message. We've talked about interests and we've even discovered our why. So last video, you should have narrowed down your two word combination and hopefully maybe you've gotten to your final two words. Maybe you haven't gotten there yet. You're still wrestling with that. Again, don't rush the process, okay? Now I want you to look on page 54 and 55 we're actually going to look on page 54 through my platforms section in your journal. Let me explain to you real quick what uh, the toilet paper principle is. On page number 54, it says this, everybody wants to change the world, but nobody wants to change the toilet paper. This is a sign that's in my guest bathroom at my house. And I know my wife put that there for a reason, because I always have my mind on changing the world. Uh, what I can do out there and I sometimes forget the small little things the details that make life go round something as small as changing the toilet paper in my bathroom right and so this idea this principle of everybody wants to change the world but nobody wants to change the toilet paper the principle is this small things matter more than big things in fact all big things are built on small parts so if we get the small things right the big things will succeed naturally. So I want us to take some time to look at the platforms that we have in our lives and to make sure that we are being a good steward of every one of those platforms. Instead of looking at changing the world, let's first off look at changing our family. And then let's change our community. And then let's change our state. And then let's change our country. And then let's change our world. That's the idea. It starts with us individually. So what are some platforms that you have in your life right now that maybe you are not being a good steward of? So on the next several pages in your journal, starting on page 56, there is a whole list of platforms. And it's just a blank page, much like this. Uh, one is my platforms, my family. I encourage you to write out all the names of your family members and then rate your relationship with them on a scale of 1 to 5 and draw out even a half star if you need to. Okay, do the same thing with your friends. Do the same thing on the page that says my platforms, my community connections and my national connections and my international connections. Write those names down and rate that relationship on a scale of one to five with one being bad and five being incredible, right? And do those little stars, fill in those little stars there. And then the next question that I have for you is, what is it going to take to move that relationship from a three and a half star to a four star or from a two and a half star to a three star or a three to a three and a half or a five, four to a five, whatever it may be. What is it going to take to leverage that platform and to be a good steward of that platform so that you can take care of the small platforms before you focus on the big platforms? The principle is this, don't chase and pursue big platforms until you first taking care of the small platforms. The small platforms in our lives start with our family. So how are you doing with your family?